What up, guys? Welcome to New Jersey HorrorCon. Make some noise for the cast of Kindergarten Cop, Mr. Miko Hughes and Mr. Richard Tyson. Thank you so much for taking the time on the busy Friday night, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, I've been a fan of Kindergarten Cop since I was in kindergarten, no pun intended. Um, but I've always wondered, what are your earliest memories, your first impressions of the script or the project, the first time you heard about it? Any first memories with Kindergarten Cop? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know, I, it My memories tough. of Kindergarten Cop are very, like, picture memories. They're not probably what people would be interested in knowing about the filming because I was a kid. And every, it, was, it was like behind the scenes on set playing with other kids. Like, I remember playing Game Boy. I remember we had pizza for lunch and I didn't like pizza, so I would just eat the pepperoni off the top of it. Like, not like, oh, meeting Arnold or like working on this great big feature. It's like, no, pepperoni and Game Boy is, is what I remember. <laughs> and he had the funniest lines in the movie. Oh my God, yes, absolutely, of course. I'm sure it's one you have to sign and quote many, many times throughout life. It's true, I've, I've since verified that boys have a penis and girls have a vagina. <laughs> Does it follow you around? Yeah, for a long time growing up, I, I got teased about it a lot. And I kind of <laughs> I kind of hated it. At, at, for There was a good age where, um, it was difficult, you know. Right. Now, right. now I love it. Now I can appreciate it for what yeah, it is. Yeah, you can say penis. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I mean, we just did. So. <laughs> well, do the line, man. Yeah, but I just did. Pet cemetery. Uh, uh, boys have a penis. Girls have a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> My dad's a gynecologist, and he looks at vaginas all day long. <laughs> um, Has anyone ever quoted that at you in a very inappropriate place? Yeah, well, like, that's what I would get teased at the mall when I was 11, and I'd have, there'd be a circle of teenagers like, say the line, say the line, they'd be saying it at me, and I'd be like, I'm just trying to buy shoes, like, I don't oh know you, yeah. I'm so sorry, I didn't no, mean to bring up a fine. dark memory. That's no, awesome. no, no, it's, I mean, it's funny, it's just, it's interesting, yeah. Holy shit, that's but I'm scary thankful. as hell. It's very, it's become, you know, memorable and iconic, and, and I'm thankful to, you know, have been able to have a line that everybody remembers like that. So. That's true. You have one line that lives in the pop culture lexicon and you got a hit movie right there. Yeah. That's the line. Until I was canceled because of it. But yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I, I won't touch that one. But um, So, Richard, your first memories of Kindergarten Cop. My first memory? Yeah. Well, um... Game Boy and Pepperoni. I, uh, seven years before, I had the audition in this room at, at Warner Brothers, and uh, seven years before that, I had sprinted past the guard and got all the way into the studio. I broke into every studio, and I ran into the first uh, room on the right, and there was a table that was up against the desk, a long, you know, picnic table. And I'm like, that's weird. I'm getting under it. I'm going to hide for a while. <laughs> and I did. I hid for about an hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, and then, I, then I went and I knocked on every door, you know, <laughs> out there. Uh, but uh, seven years later, I have this audition for Kindergarten Cop. And uh, I go in and I'm like, this is the same room that I was in. <laughs> and the table is still there, you know, by the, coming out of the desk. I don't know, I still don't understand it, you know. Uh, but I remember uh, Ivan Reitman, God bless him. Uh, he said, Tyson, you get an agent that can put you in the room. That's all you need because 98% of the actors cannot get the job in the room. You just did. That's, so that's cool. awesome. <laughs> I love that this, this movie feels like it should be conceived with like Game Boy pizza pepperoni and picnic tables. Like That's so fitting. I love that. I absolutely love that. I, I thought you were going to say you got the role because you started to climb back under the table while <laughs> oh, they were there. <laughs> and, before I, hey, and before I left, I checked. I said, yeah, I got to yeah. check. And, you know, for no, old time's sake. Nobody under there. Yeah. Nobody's in there. <laughs> so I guess you touched on this a little bit, Richard, but do you have any memories from the audition process, Miko? 
it makes for a boring story, but I, I don't. I wish I did. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure there was. A I mean, there's process. a lot of shit that I don't remember from that age, so it's totally understandable. Yeah, and I know you gave I was... me such a gem with Game Boy pepperoni. So I guess, man. Yeah, you definitely get a pass on that one. I remember Arnold. I remember being in the classroom a, a little bit, um, uh, and I'm sure. I think I was the the youngest of all the kids. Most of them were five or six, and I, I was four that. at the time. I could see that. So. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Wow. Um, so any Ivan Reitman stories, anything that sticks out to you uh, remembering Ivan Reitman? Ivan, Ivan, I go to Ivan and, I, and we're shooting uh, one of the last scenes where I finally get to the boy and I've got him and I go into the nurse's station and I said, Ivan, I want to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to the kid. He goes, you're the bad guy, don't do it, don't do it. I said, come on, you know, I'm a father, you know, and he goes, don't do it. I did three takes, and I didn't do it. The fourth take, uh, the little boy put his hand on my cheek, and I got it. I started, I went, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And, uh, and uh, then he cut it, you know, once we finished. And he goes, you had to do it, didn't you? I said, yeah, I had to do it. It made the movie. I, I love makes, that line. It makes my character a human being. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, you might as well have been cigar chomping and mustache twirling, you know? Yeah. That's a great touch. I mean, a movie's a, a collection of lines and scenes that you remember. That's one that I always remember. It always stuck with me. We're getting a little feedback, it sounds like. Um, you guys can't really hear us very much. Yeah, I can't hear either. A little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to fix echoey. that. So testing, I'm gonna, one, two, testing, one, two, testing. I'm going to... Uh, Nobody can. <laughs> oh, yes, aim it. Yes, thank you. He's going to fix that. Um, so, Miko, did you have anything that you remember about Ivan Reitman, or was he just very patient with all these kids? <sighs> yeah, I got to imagine it was, it was a handful, having as many of us as there were. Um, I, I think there might be, like, a photo of us somewhere um, on set, but uh, I, I don't remember interacting with him specifically. I'm sure my parents might... You know, I would have been able to touch on that more. Were you, I do remember Arnold more. You remember Arnold yeah. more? Okay. And I, I, I actually ran into Arnold a year or two after filming. It, was, it might have been two or three years uh, filming. And we were on the back lot of, like, Warner Brothers or something. And he remembered me. Like, we were wow. walking by. And, and he remembered, like, we saw it was him. But he remembered me by name, which we would not have expected, which was you really like, cool. Did you like full first and last, or just Miko? Yeah, just me, I think just Miko, yeah. Wow, but that still, was cool. that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. Uh, cool. So, uh, Tyson, Richard, I know you have some good uh, Arnold stories to tell, because uh, we talked to Classic Rewind a few months back. Um, any of those, uh, any Arnold stories you want to share with the audience here? Uh, sure. Uh, he, uh, We'd always tell jokes between shots, you know? And uh, that's his second language, is English. When I first saw him, he was in a big studio with a long white table. I don't think they got it from that room, you know? But, uh, <laughs> but he was sitting there with an English teacher. And he, he was humble enough to say, I can't say the R's too well, you know? And, and they uh, picked out uh, certain lines that he was comfortable with. And I, he was just so humbled when I saw him, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, we all knew him before that. But to see him humbled there that day, you know, trying to get the words right, I mean, that was remarkable, wow. you know. Um, and we had a great time, you know, doing the, doing the thing. Oh, like... Uh, he throws me through the door to interrogate me. Do you remember oh, that? my favorite. I love it. Yeah, Arnold. They go, all right, they, he's going to throw you through the door. I said, Arnold, you're not touching me. <laughs> you, look, I have a master's from Cornell. I know how to get through a door, you know? He goes, no, Dyson, I have to do it. You know, and he, he's getting all ready. I'm like, no, no, I'm telling you. He goes, Dyson. If you do it, you gotta make me look good. <laughs> I went parallel to the floor through that door and was stumbling backwards and he put me in the seat, you know. I grew so, up I grew up watching Arnold put people through doors and windows and walls as a Terminator, <laughs> and not one of them makes me go, damn, like that scene still does. Every time I watch it, I'm like, shit, 
He <laughs> ate that door. Damn. Like, <laughs> so you sold the hell out of that one, my friend. Um, but you mentioned, you know, Arnold, you knew, knowing who he was before, what was your, like, opinion of him before? I mean, like, was he, like, a hero to you like he was to every other four-year-old, five-year-old kid? Yeah, I don't think I had seen the Terminator, of course, but uh, I, he was familiar with him. He was, you know, kind of the biggest action star yeah, in the world. Of course. Um, so I was, I was excited. Uh, I think I was more, in a general sense, aware of him, not for anything specifically, but I knew it was a big deal, and right. he was... It was really cool, you know, to, to meet him and, and he, the fact that he was so nice to, to all of us kids That's on the awesome. set. I think as a, 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 a rap gift at the end of filming, um, he bought every single one of us in the classroom Sony Walkmans, which at the time were like iPods. State of the that art, was yeah. like, oh my you could God. have, you yeah. know, a cassette wow. you could take with you. And wow. I used to rock out to the Power Ranger and Ninja Turtle soundtrack to that thing. So. Oh yeah, Ninja 2, Secret of the Ooze, yeah, all the way. Yeah, totally, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd like to just say, you know, at one point at lunchtime, the kids couldn't get the line out. Uh, stranger danger. They couldn't say it loud enough. And so the director, all right, cut. Let's cut. Let's go to lunch. The kids all go outside. I said, I'm going outside, too, because I can coach them up, <laughs> you know. And I coach all you guys up and, you know, scream it. Now, I want you to, you know, really say it. You know, stranger danger, stranger. And, and I worked with them, I worked with them. Finally, we get a, a microphone going up. Would the bad guy and the kids please come in? We're ready to go. Lunch is over. And we went in the first. I said, you better adjust your, your volume switch because they're going to rock it. And the first one, they came down, Ranger, Ranger, you know, and it was like off, off the charts. And he goes, all right, cut, look, turn that down over there. All right, let's try it again. And, um, and I just remember uh, Ivan, he had, he had five uh, little notes for the kids, what not to do. And uh, what was that? I can't remember, oh, man. I, I don't know. Uh, Oh, don't think, look at the camera. Yeah, I think yeah. I saw a picture recently. A friend online found a, a, some old photos from the set, and there's a board on the wall that said that. That was the five things, and one of the big ones was like, don't look in the camera. Right. Yeah. 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 This, I even remember reading this re recently, I think, probably doing research for the panel. So, uh, not like I needed to. I've seen Kindergarten Cop like a billion times. Um, but one more before I turn it over to the audience. Um, Arnold's done quite a few comedies throughout his career, even quite a few with Ivan Reitman, but this is the one that really lives on forever. Like, yeah, Twins is great, you know, Jingle All the Way, you know, Junior. But this is the one that, like, everybody loves. So, what is it to you guys that you think makes this movie live on forever? Or what gives it that heart, or what separates it from the rest of the pack? There was an honesty towards it, you know, just the way uh, Ivan Reitman, uh, presented it, you know, it was, uh, the only thing I don't get is the big tower where the kid climbed up the tower, tower to defend, I don't know what that, what that was for, I don't know, it oh, was, that, you know that's, yeah. a, some, that's some other movie, I don't know. <laughs> I, could, I could see that, I could see yeah. what you mean by that, it does feel a little bit separate from But the, it's personal, you know, when you get the kids to get it right and, uh, I uh, just, uh, I don't know, we just clicked, you know. Uh, Arnold, I said, Arnold, you have that stationary bike uh, outside your trailer. Every morning I see it, and I haven't warmed up yet, and do you mind if I uh, use it? He goes, uh, yeah, Tyson, go, you do it, you do that, you know. <laughs> and uh, I got over there and it still had tape on it and no one had even ridden it one time. I said, Arnold, let me just take it over. No, he says, you can, you, you can do it here, you know. So every morning I would go there and uh, warm up like that. Yeah, I think it, the movie kind of came at a, a time in Arnold's career where he was known for as being this action guy. And I think doing like a family film, well, he still was being that action character. It had, like you said, it had a lot of heart and it, it made it like family accessible. And I think it just kind of, it was just good timing for a film like that, that, that it kind of hit on a lot of levels, thankfully. 
Yeah, that's, that's true, you know. Uh, now it's in the living room, you know, uh, of uh, families all across the world. Uh, and before that, he was, you know, just bang him up guy, you know. And this really brought him out. You know? So we do have a pretty packed room here for a Friday night. I do want to give the audience a chance to jump in with their questions. Anybody have questions yet out there? Are we still not warmed up enough? All right, I know it takes a while, so I can keep going here. One, um, two, three, four. Oh, oh yeah, back there we to, go. We're, they're I right don't there. see they're anybody. Right <laughs> Were there ever, and I apologize because I know this might not have been a concern of yours at that age, but were there concerns of uh, the film opening so close to Home Alone? No. No, <laughs> quite simply. Ivan Reitman was the fucking king of the world. He wasn't scared about Home Alone. Right. Yeah. Uh, I could see that. He was great. That's awesome. Very cool. We um, had the power. I mean, if you get someone to watch that movie. I'm your father, Dominic. I'm your father. I'm no jerk you're fireman. Not, where's your, what, I'm a fireman. Because where's your hat? You know? I mean, those uh, little scenes uh, with the kid yeah. uh, really brought it home. So, um, I'm trying to do this thing with the panels now, a little word association game. So hopefully this will warm the audience up a little bit. Because there's a million questions I could ask about Kindergarten Cop, I, if it's cool with you guys, I'm gonna say a name, someone that worked on the movie, you see the first thing that comes to mind. Arnold. <laughs> okay, so Linda Hunt. Any Richard memories? Tyson. Linda Hunt. Yeah. You could say that. You could say yeah. Richard Tyson, yeah. Richard Tyson, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm drawing a blank. Okay, she, yeah. you know, if you don't remember, she was the principal. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Um, I should have said that. My bad. If, if I'm being honest, I haven't seen the movie in like 10 years, probably. Wow. So, well, yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. I know, I'm hyped. I should, I, I should go well, watch you know, it now. Well, I need want, to get refreshed. You know, not everyone wants to watch themselves when they're that young over and over again. Sure, you know? yeah. I'm not in the movies so I can watch it every week. Yeah. yeah. She, was, she was a fascinating character she's she was a, a great character actress oh yeah she i had remember a great run. seeing her in a, in a lot of things too yeah. um i believe she passed no she's i saw her on tv pretty recently but i yeah. I, I my apologies and condolences okay. if she yeah. has yeah um she's you know just one of those people that yeah, she was you always recognize instantly you know like yeah. oh i love her you know yeah absolutely oh very cool very yeah. cool um would you have any memories you guys had a little scene together with linda hunt uh the principal at the school what? <laughs> Do you remember shooting the scenes with the principal where you're like, oh, my wife's completing the sale of our home, I'm checking out the school, the woman who played the principal, Linda Hunt? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was just, uh, she's about this tall, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? What's her name? Linda Hunt. Yeah, she was great, you know, and just oh, focused yeah. and a professional, you know. Uh, Right, so she took me around, you know, for the tour. Oh, right, right, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, so I'll try this again. Uh, any memories of Penelope Ann Miller, who played uh, Arnold's love interest, of course, Dominic's mother, your ex-wife? Yeah, I had no scenes with her, you know. Uh, well, you had the one, I guess, right? Just the one? The shootout at the end? You told him all these lies about me. Oh. Um, yeah, that one. <laughs> I know the movie pretty well, yeah. <laughs> so no memories there, all right. Uh, Word association game, not going so well. Um, have you guys seen uh, Kindergarten Cop 2 with Dolph Lundgren? No, I haven't yet, but I, I had an interesting encounter. I worked on a film in Mississippi recently, um, and I, I, I work behind the camera a lot in, in the camera department nowadays. And uh, the director was the director of Kindergarten Cop 2. Oh, and wow. I didn't realize that until we were like halfway through production and we were hanging out talking one day and, and it came up and I mentioned, I was like, oh, that's so funny, you know, Small World. I was in the original, like, if I would have known you a year or two ago when you were shooting it, you could have done a cameo or something that might have been fun or funny. And he was like, oh, yeah, ha, uh, cool. Like, I don't think he even heard it. It just whooshed. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, well. All right. Well, I still need to see it, though. I, maybe, I, had a, maybe had a really crazy day going on. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was, it was funny, though. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? I heard it didn't work. <laughs> well, I yeah. have yet to see it, so I can confirm, I can neither confirm nor deny. Right. But, uh, it hasn't, I love the original, and I haven't gone to see it yet, so sure. I guess in that sense, maybe it didn't. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, who was uh, Arnold's character? Dolph Lundgren. Dolph, Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren. Yeah. Which is a, seems like a good fit. If you're gonna do a sequel, yeah, it's it kinda, seems like it. Yeah. yeah, it could be good. Yes. I know. mean, but like who Dolph? can play me? No, I don't. Nobody. Know. Nobody could play you. It's gonna take a lot of CGI and a lot of wizardry to make <laughs> one so charming and so charismatic. Oh my God! I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so I'm hogging this mic, guys. Anyone in the audience have questions yet? Boy, it is a quiet room full of kindergarten cop fans. That's okay. Um, any memories from the premiere or opening weekend? Uh, yeah, I didn't make it. Oh. <laughs> I was working. I told the director, look, I need to get off, you know. And he uh, goes, well, if we're not working uh, too late, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we worked late. And, yeah, it was so uh, disappointing. Mika, did you get drunk at the after party and crash? Or? Shiggity shwasted. <laughs> there was a, they had the kids room and, and it was boxes. Just, yeah, it was like vodka and apple juice. <laughs> start them young, start them young. Um, so I'm sure you've heard a lot of stories from fans about what they love about the movie. Do you have any favorite fan stories or people that tell you like, oh, you know, this movie, you know, saved my parents' marriage or anything like that? Well, crazy. My Any friend, memory stories that stick out? My, I'm sorry, my friend uh, in the pub, you know, uh, after a couple, we'll go, uh, do the family line, do the family line at the end. I said, oh, well, I got the, got the kid. Oh, I did, I did all this, uh, all this acting with this gun, and it's my kid, and I was, I was like, oh, I can't shoot him, you know, and I, I said, oh, no, Arnold, stay there, and I, I did all this, and they cut it down to just gun on the boy's head. You know? Oh, man. And, and uh, they say, my friends are in the pub, they said, go ahead, do the family line. This is, this is, this is my boy, get your own goddamn family, you know? And they all go, yay! It's kind of fun. I don't know. Yeah, that's absolutely classic. <clears throat> that's so, blessed. Sorry again about my voice, guys. I, my cat ran into traffic the other day. I had to yell. That's why my voice is shot. Um, so yeah, I apologize about that. Um, do you want to give the audience one more chance to get in there for questions though, guys? Depending on how your cat's doing. I, my I, cat is fine. Oh. He survived. It's okay. I was going to let out a blood curdling scream to stop traffic. So I, I was going to say, I, I know a place if, <laughs> if you knew. I don't know. Well, that brings up an interesting point. How different was this experience from Pet Cemetery for you? Another one I barely remember. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, and filmmaking is, is pretty universal, so I don't think, you know, making a horror is different than an action family comedy. That makes sense. Um, I'm, I'm sure there, you know, are elements and, and scenes that, that require different, um, you know, focus and whatnot, but, uh, but making a movie is pretty much making a movie, essentially. That makes sense, that makes sense. Um, so one, one more I have to ask. Any memories of the first time you heard the great Randy Edelman score? Or, you know, just reactions to that? Like, because that score really compliments the movie to me, and I always wondered if you guys felt the yeah, same. It does, it's like very memorable. For, yeah, for a family comedy like that, it is like... Do you want me to no sing it? For it? Oh, please, by <laughs> all can. means, the troubadour. Uh, we're not gonna do that, no. no. <laughs> well... I have probably kept you guys away from your tables for long enough, so yeah. thank you so much for taking the time. Guys, be sure to get to their table, get some pictures, get some autographs. I know they have a lot more stories to tell you, and put your hands together, make some noise for these two for spending some time with us. Thanks, guys. guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. This is Ross Marquand, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight, which is awesome. So like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and have fun, and follow your fandom.